Hello guys, welcome to Stats with Morky. Here is our example in Chapter 3, Section 1 uh, about the long jump groups. So each member of a small statistics class ran a 40-yard sprint and then did a long jump. The table below shows the sprint time in seconds and the long jump distance in inches. So whenever you're looking at a table, uh, we want to try to determine what is our explanatory and response variable. And pretty much always you can count on our explanatory variable to be on the top and our response variable the y to be down below now that's not always guaranteed but that's uh pretty much a standard that you can count on so that first one is going to be our explanatory and it kind of makes sense if you know much about um long jump generally faster people can jump further so the sprint time is going to be what we're using to explain the distance that they were able to jump The directions ask us, or the question asks us down below, to make a scatter plot of the relationship between the sprint time and long jump distance. Describe what the scatter plot reveals about the relationship between sprint time and long jump distances for students in the statistics class. So whenever I look at uh, that kind of big chunk of text, I want to uh, pull out the things that are important. So the first thing they ask us to do, number one, is they ask us to make a scatter plot. So down below. That is what I have done right there. So you can see on the x-axis, that is our sprint time. That is our explanatory variable. And on the y-axis over here, that is our long jump distance in inches. So I have included a label and a scale. One other feature of the graph that might be of interest is this little uh, squiggle right there that represents a break. Because we're not starting at 0, 0, it's a good idea to include a break to represent, hey, a lot of information here that we skipped over that we didn't think was in, uh, necessary to include in our graph, but uh, it should be there in general. So looking at our variables, our longest jump was 184. So that was our longest jump. Our shortest jump was 65. So on our x, our y-axis, rather, we need to include numbers that correspond roughly to 65 all the way up to that 180 number. So I went from 50 all the way up to 175, and then I have that 184 just a little bit above that. And with regards to our uh, x-axis, the sprint times, our sh fastest runner was 5.05, and our slowest runner was 7.25. So we've included all of those along the x-axis. I just chose a scale that I thought would make that fit well. So I started at 5 and then went by uh, 0.2 and then labeled halfway in between each of those. And so we have uh, every tenth of a second is included on that scale. So that is our scatter plot. So we have the label, scales, and the po uh, points included. The second thing that they ask us to do is to describe. That is one of those key words. Whenever you see the word describe, that tells us that we are going to be looking at uh, stud. We're going to be looking at look, identifying the strength, the type, any looking un for any unusual features, and the direction. So the first thing is, uh, for the strength, how close is this to being a line? Well, I can grab a ruler and just kind of like figure out where do I think a line, if I were to draw it, might be. Maybe something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but I'd say that's not super close to being a line, but it's not super far away either. So I would consider that to be a moderate uh, strength. So that would be a moderately strong. If we look at the general direction of that line that is headed in the negative direction, so that is a moderately strong negative. And I would say that looks fairly linear. Uh, in terms of the rate of change, it looks like those points don't have any sort of curve to them that is uh, pr predominant, so I would consider that a moderately strong negative linear association between sprint time and long jump distance. So as always, make sure to include context. And then on the end there, we can include that there are no unusual features. There's no points that stood out as being particularly uh, divergent from the rest of them, and there were no clear like gaps or clusters in our data that stood out as well. So that's our first example.